It's violent. Riddled with ethnic hatred, dangerous tensions, bullying, nationalist bravado. But it's not just Vladimir Putin and the Russians who have a passion for the Crimean Peninsula. The Crimea is a sparkling jewel set enticingly in the Black Sea. It's been coveted by many peoples and nations over 2,000 years of history. The Huns, the Goths and the Mongols, as well as the Greeks and the Turks, were just some of the settlers and invaders who wanted to possess it. But the Russian Empire, led by Catherine the Great, annexed the Crimea in 1783 as part of her ambition to push south, starting a love affair with the peninsula which prevails today. The current efforts of Britain and other European allies to contain Russian ambitions in the Crimea have echoes in history, but with a much bloodier outcome. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell. Boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the 600. The charge of the Light Brigade, one of the most dramatic moments in the Crimean War when Britain and her allies attempted to stop Russian expansionism using the Crimean Peninsula as a bridgehead. It gave us terms like the Thin Red Line and the First Victoria Cross. This permanent exhibition at the National Army Museum on the Crimean Campaign shows how it was the birthplace of modern nursing. There's even an example of one of Florence Nightingale's lamps. No matter how indelibly printed the Crimea campaign is on British history, that is insignificant in comparison to what it means to the Russians. The Crimean Peninsula is indelibly burnt onto the Russian psyche. It is the jewel in their crown. And it remained so until it was snatched by Germany in World War II. The German assault sparked some of the bloodiest fighting on the Eastern Front in the summer of 1942 until a massive offensive regained the Crimea for Moscow two years later. They are preparing to evacuate to the Crimea, taking Soviet civilians with them for slave labor. The Crimea then played its part in the future of the world when Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin met at Yalta in 1945 to carve the shape of the post-war global landscape between them. Stalin quickly moved to change the ethnic balance of the peninsula in favour of Russians. He deported 200,000 ethnic Tatars who he accused of collaborating with the Nazis. Soon though the Crimea became a resort area for the Soviet elite. Gorbachev had a holiday dacha here. More than a million Russians still take their annual vacation on the peninsula. This place is a nice place. I really like it here. The root of today's conflict lies in a whimsical decision taken by Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev in 1954. Most of the people in Crimea have never been um, happy with the fact that Khrushchev, 60 years ago, without consulting them, detached uh, their region from uh, the Russian Republic and gave it to Ukraine. It didn't matter very much in Soviet times, but it certainly mattered after the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. Tension over the Crimea increased quickly through the 90s when Kiev and Moscow squabbled over the future of Russia's Black Sea fleet at Sebastopol. And it's still seen by Putin as a Russian strategic necessity. In law, the Crimea is Ukrainian. But in the hearts of many, perhaps most Russians, it was only ever on loan to their neighbour. Now Crimea is just days away from a referendum on secession. Never shy of showing his enthusiasm for the region, Vladimir Putin unexpectedly turned up here at a Russian nationalist biker convention and now, just as unexpectedly, Russian troops have stolen back the Crimean jewel. Sam Kiley, Sky News.